I'm going to go into networks and create a new network that's going to be just for guests. So I'll click on add and we see a new list of various different types of settings I can go in and make changes to. And I'll also need to name it as well. I'm going to check the box for guest. So by checking the box for guest, it automatically is going to make a couple of changes. One is it's going to create a separate subnet. So the guests are not on the same subnet as the employees. It also gives me the option to go with an open security. And that means that there is no password. However, unless I uncheck the guest portal, the guests will receive a portal when they first go to any type of internet website. And the portal will basically tell them about ethical web browsing and ethical use of their network, which you can customize if you'd like. And that will allow the user to decide whether or not they want to connect after reading those directions. However, there's no real enforcement that comes along with it. It's just a directive by the company themselves. Then we see this other option for Wi-Fi Enhanced Open. And what that is, is it creates an encryption for the data traffic between the client device, say the mobile phone, the tablet, or the laptop using Wi-Fi, and the wireless access point. In this case, it would be an Aruba access point. So any traffic between those two will be encrypted. So if it's sniffed out, they would have a hard time reading that traffic because it's being encrypted. Now, once it leaves the wireless access point and goes to the firewall, not to the internet, it's no longer encrypted. So keep that in mind that the enhanced open is only going to encrypt traffic between the client and the access point. I'm going to check out some of these other options for creating the guest network. Take a look at the specific to this wireless network default. So what that's going to be is it's going to set up that separate subnet. In this case, it's 172.16 as I'm on a 192.168 network. And that means that for guest traffic, it's going to do routing. It's going to route from 172.16 to the internal network and then out to the internet. However, it's not going to allow traffic to any other device other than the firewall to go out to the internet. And I had the same options that I had for the employee network, such as Wi-Fi 6, the radio frequency 2.4, as well as 5 gigahertz, or just one or the other. And if I go to the schedule, I can set up guest schedule access, which I think is a really good idea. So I can decide when it is that guests can connect. Probably only during business hours makes the most sense. Then you have the network access, which once again is going to be just limited to access to the internet. Now you can add additional single IP addresses one at a time to have access to as well. If say you have a guest that needs to access a printer that you'd like to allow them to print on your network, then you can go ahead and add that IP address. And you can allow selected clients to connect to them as well, but that's not really a good idea. Then you have the network assignment. So it's going to connect to any of these Wi-Fi wireless access points. However, you may want to restrict them just to specific ones, say ones that might be in the conference room. And then you have the ability to go into applications. And once again, we would have to go back to the application section in order to limit what types of applications they can use. So I'll click on save and then I'm going to go back into applications and I'll click on the applications option. So if I want to see full definitions as well as lock out just specific guest access, then I can go ahead and uncheck whatever it is I'd like. Guest access is an excellent way to protect your employee network from any guests that may be connecting, especially if they don't have any type of password that's required for them to connect.